Hi there, my name's Simon Drew and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast, where I give you practical stoic advice for modern times. If you'd like to see more information about the podcast, or if you'd like to see more of my free resources, you can go to my website, it's risetothegoodlife.com. If you have been getting a lot of value out of this podcast, then please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this, and leave a positive review. But for now, enjoy this episode. Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast. Yesterday I went into my local gym, and I happened to pass by the gym manager. We started talking, and one of the topics that came up was the fact that every year in January, gyms seem to see a spike in new memberships, as well as a spike in attendance by current members. The manager said to me that she will soon start to see people in the gym who she hasn't seen there for more than six months. There can only be one reason for this unusual increase in gym goers, and that reason is New Year's resolutions. This seems like a really positive thing, and it is. It means that more people are getting out there and trying to become their best selves. However, there is a rather depressing element to this whole situation. See, back to the conversation I was having, the manager also mentioned that by the third week of February, she will see a large decrease back to the average attendance numbers. And it's exactly what you're thinking. Most of those people who started the year with grand goals of becoming fit, will eventually give up after about a month and a half. This is why I don't necessarily believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe that if you really want something, then you shouldn't be waiting until a specific date when it will somehow become magically easier to achieve your goal. There is no better time than now to write down your goals and start working. And if you really want to achieve the goal, then why would you want to wait anyway? But one thing that I do like and really appreciate about New Year's resolutions is that it does put a lot more people in the game. Millions of people all around the world will start to learn new skills, take better care of themselves, and become better people. And that's still a very positive thing, even if most of them do give up by February. So, seeing as it is the goal-setting season, and seeing as many of you will be attempting grand goals in the new year, I thought that I should try, in my own way, to give you the best chance of succeeding so that at the end of February you are still chasing that goal with as much passion and purpose as if it were January 1st. And the way that I'm going to help you is by giving you three amazing pieces of wisdom from Epictetus, who was truly a master of self-improvement and life change. So here's the first piece of wisdom from Epictetus. He says, quote, Who exactly do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to be? What are your personal ideals? Who do you admire? What are their special traits that you would make your own? It's time to stop being vague. If you wish to be an extraordinary person, if you wish to be wise, then you should explicitly identify the kind of person you aspire to become. If you have a daybook, write down who you're trying to be, so that you can refer to this self-definition. Precisely describe the demeanor you want to adopt, so that you may preserve it when you are by yourself or with other people. End quote. In the first half of this paragraph, Epictetus is talking about what I believe is the most important part of any goal or aspiration towards life change, and that is clarity. He's asking questions about us, about who we truly want to be, and he's desperately trying to encourage us to become clear on where we are headed. Without this level of deep clarity about who you are and where you want to go, I honestly don't believe that you will ever reach any desired destination. You must have a clear vision, because if you don't know where you want to go, then you're basically wandering through the desert with a broken compass. The second part of that paragraph is also vitally important, because Epictetus asks us to do something that basically every self-improvement guru today asks us to do, and that is to write down your goals. Don't ever trust your memory. We are all forgetful people, and if we do not write things down, then we will forget them. That is just a fact of life. So write down your goals, write down who you want to be, and why you want to be like that. This is one of the oldest goal-setting concepts, and yet so few people actually do it, even though we all know that by simply writing down your goals, you are significantly improving your chances of achieving them. So seeing as we are always within reach of some sort of note-taking device, and seeing as we all know that we should be doing this, there is no excuse for not writing down your goals. 
The next piece of wisdom from Epictetus that will hopefully push you past February is this, quote, Now is the time to get serious about living your ideals. Once you have determined these spiritual principles you wish to exemplify, abide by these rules as if they were laws, as if it were indeed sinful to compromise them. How long can you afford to put off who you really want to be? Your nobler self cannot wait any longer. Put your principles into practice now. Stop the excuses and the procrastination. This is your life. You aren't a child anymore. The sooner you set yourself to your spiritual program, the happier you will be. The longer you wait, the more you'll be vulnerable to mediocrity and feel filled with shame and regret, because you know you are capable of better. From this instant on, vow to stop disappointing yourself. Separate yourself from the mob. Decide to be extraordinary and do what you need to do now. End quote. You know, there is so much wisdom in this one paragraph, but I think the most important takeaway is that once you have decided who you want to be and how you want to live, it is time to throw away your excuses and your procrastination and to begin immediately to live by your principles, no matter what. I love how he says that we should live by these rules as if they were laws, or as if it were sinful to compromise them. He's basically saying that we should burn the bridges, We should give ourselves no excuses for living contrary to our goals and our desired principles. Also, there's one thing that many of you may have noticed about this paragraph, and that is that Epictetus is emphasizing spiritual principles. And what I have found about this quote is that if you replace the word spiritual with any other goal category, then it can apply even better to your life and your goals. For example, instead of saying, the sooner you get yourself on your spiritual program, the happier you will be, it could now say, the sooner you get yourself on your health program, the happier you will be. And because this quote is so motivational, and because you can customize it to your specific goals, I'm actually going to put it in the show notes so that you can copy it and print it off, because I think that this would be a really powerful paragraph to read each morning to motivate you to live the life that you say you want to live. And now, the third piece of wisdom from Epictetus. He says, quote, The first steps towards wisdom are the most strenuous, because our weak and stubborn souls dread exertion and the unfamiliar without absolute guarantee of reward. As you progress in your efforts, your resolve is fortified and self-improvement progressively comes easier. By and by, it actually becomes difficult to work counter to your own best interest. End quote. What Epictetus says here is so true. The first steps towards wisdom or self-improvement or goals are the most strenuous. I've read that up to 92% of New Year's goals fail by January 15th, and that makes a lot of sense in the context of what Epictetus has just said. When you start any significant life change, it will be very difficult at first. Yes, you are going to struggle, and yes, you are going to want to revert back to your previous lifestyle and habits. But stay the course and know that soon it will be easier. And in fact, it will soon get to the stage where to live contrary to your goals will be painful, and you will want to push on. Think about this every time you contemplate giving up, and remember that all you have to do is push past one more obstacle, one more painful session at the gym, one more book, one more hour of study. Throw away your alibis, and commit to staying on track until you see results. I really hope that this has been helpful to you, and I hope that I've been able to give you some added motivation to achieve your goals next year. In the end, it all comes down to patience and persistence. If you give up, and if you give in to your lesser self, then you'll be just like all those other people who had grand visions on January 1st before giving up a week later. Be different. Be extraordinary. Before I end this episode, I want to give you one more bonus quote from Epictetus. He said, quote, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do, end quote. It's simple, but it describes exactly how we should live our lives. Decide who you want to be, and then settle for no less than being exactly that. Don't stray from your path. Set the goal, and then smash it. Good luck in 2018. Hi there, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you who have supported me since I released this podcast uh, this year. 
I really never imagined that there would be so many people from so many different countries who would be interested in hearing what I had to say about Stoicism. And as of today, we're up to 35 episodes and over 50,000 unique downloads from people in about 150 different countries. This is a great start and I'm so excited to move into 2018 with more episodes and maybe even some exciting guests on the show. So thank you once again to everyone who has subscribed, listened, reviewed and shared this podcast. You are truly helping me to achieve my goals and to become a better person and I hope that you're getting as much value just by listening. I hope that you've absolutely smashed 2017, and on behalf of all of us here at the Practical Stoic Podcast, that being myself only, I would like to wish you a very happy new year. I'll talk to you next year. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. I hope that you've gotten a lot of value out of it, and I hope that it helps you to live a better life. If you have been enjoying this podcast, then don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this and leave a positive review so that other people can have the chance to listen to this great work. Don't forget that you can see more free resources on my website at risetothegoodlife.com or on Facebook at Practical Stoic Quotes.